Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens, I'm in Luang Prabang, Lao. Today we are on our way to Guangxi Waterfalls, which is one of the most popular day trips to take from Luang Prabang. It's a beautiful cascading waterfall. Uh, but first we're stopping for some breakfast and then we're gonna continue on to the waterfall and then hopefully we're gonna find a delicious lunch. We rented a van for the day, for the, for the morning part of the day. We are on our way, this is gonna be a very fun day. I'm gonna share it all with you in this video right now. We're here to eat the kao chi, which is the Lao version of the baguette sandwich. So she takes the personal baguette, she slices it, she actually, actually toasts it over charcoal first. And then she has a mixture, which looks, it looks like the, the Luang Prabang kao soy mixture, which is, looks like minced meat and some kind of tomato chili oil. And then she puts that on the bottom. Then she mixes in the, all the variety of ingredients. There's some ham. There are some, there's some sliced up egg. There's some cucumber, some cilantro, some chili paste. Uh, she folds that all into the bread. And then additionally, right in front of where she's making the, the sandwiches, he is frying up, deep frying some dumplings, which uh, the oil is a, is a little bit murky, but those smell really good. We're just gonna have to try a few of them. Wow, dude. The sandwich is just fully loaded. It's just exploding with ham and meat and that, I like how she uses that, that meat, oil, tomato mixture, uh, both inside. And I, I don't think she added any pate. So normally pate is common in here, but I think she uses that, that meat, tomato, relish mixture. And yeah, it's just fully loaded. Uh, I like also how she served it on a good morning plate. What a, what a lovely touch. This is one of those sandwiches you gotta really kinda squeeze down so you don't lose any ingredients when you take your first bite. But yeah, there's cilantro, there's, there's uh, cucumber in here. This is a fully loaded, wonderful looking sandwich. I think the touch I like the most is that you've got that, that oil, tomato, chili oil from that minced pork mixture. The bread could be a little more crusty. The bread is like kinda like more like bun, bun in texture. But the whole combination tastes fantastic. And because there is a nice tub of the chili flakes, chili oil on our table, I think it would be delicious with a little a little extra on there. Oh, that might be a little too much for this this top bite, but but I'm willing to go for it. Mmm. Mm. Oh, that chili. Oh yeah, I think that might just be chili. It has a really smoky flavor to it, and it's kind of crumbly. I think it might be held together with maybe possibly lard. Next up for these little fried dumplings. Mm. 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 Oh, I thought it was gonna be like more heavy because the wrapper looks very thick, but it's actually almost kind of like bready, like fluffy. On the inside, you taste the, um, there's water chestnut, there's some minced meat and I think some some woodier fungus. Almost has like a mashed potato texture on the inside. Oh yeah, everything is better with that chili. <laughs> Breakfast was great. Okay, we gotta move on. We are on our way to the waterfall. Let's go, Micah. Micah. Go. Go. Okay. Samsip kilo, kap. Not worth it. Ah, paman, sixty minutes. We're on our way to Guangxi Waterfall. Our driver said it will take around. 40 minutes to get there. Uh, but the plan is, it's 7.45 right now. The plan is to go kinda kind of early uh, in the morning as they open to hopefully beat the crowds. I'm not sure if it will actually work. So hopefully we'll get some great views before the crowds arrive. That 
was about a 45 minute drive, but it was a beautiful drive passing through the mountains. We passed many villages. I'm, I'm happy to be here. It costs 20,000 kip per person to enter and we're walking in. It's already beautiful looking at the trees. The, you can hear the sound of the jungle. I'm not totally sure how long the walk is to the waterfall, but we're on our way. waterfalls that just goes down from shelf to shelf just, just, just flowing on the rocks and there are a variety of different levels we're gonna hike up to the levels but the first level here uh, you cannot go swimming here but it's just gorgeous to look at the views from the bottom level are gorgeous uh, but we're gonna hike to the next level now and they said it's about a 15 minute hike <laughs> no they just came to It's a good workout, but now we've come to where the, the water is just kind of flowing down this entire rock, this entire mountain area. So the stream is on the stairs, so be a little careful of slipping. Oh, hello little crab. We made it to the top, that took about 10 minutes, but actually up here, so we're at the very top of the levels of the waterfalls. Here it's mostly a forested area. Uh, with just pools of water and kind of a, a marshy area. Uh, we're trying to find where a good swimming hole emerald pool would be to take a swim. I think it might be further down the waterfall and then downstream maybe. I don't know, we'll walk around and I'll fill you in. We asked one of the staff here and you can swim here. Here's a nicer pool than what was a little bit, bit back there, but this is right where the waterfall is beginning where it's falling off the ledge so they have a, a couple of railings here so you don't get too close but you can just see off the ledge there that just drops down to the first pool and then to the next pool uh, with the mountains in the background it's beautiful it's beautiful i think what we're gonna do is hike back down and then he also said there are some swimming spots if you go further down uh because i i think it's a little more beautiful down there and the pools are the, the, the color of the water is gorgeous water is so beautifully turquoise in color is because the waterfall is made from limestone and as the water flows over the limestone it picks up calcium carbonate which contributes to the, the gorgeous color of the water and it is freezing cold. That would be why there are lots and lots of people here but I'm the only one swimming. I just had to take a dip uh, but it's really really refreshing too. It feels so good. As I was just sitting here speaking to the camera I can feel little fish nibbling at the dead skin on my feet. Those are the doctor fish that eat the dead skin. Uh, so hopefully if I stay here long enough and am very still, the, I'll have a swarm of fish around my feet. That would be fantastic. I think the plan actually worked out pretty well because now as we're leaving, it's getting really busy and buses and buses of people are showing up, hiking around the waterfall. For me, it was totally worth it to come early at about 8, 8.30. And we got to look around, we got to hike around with, without it being very busy at all. There were only other, a few other people here. Tip is to come early in the morning to avoid the crowds, uh, but you, do, you might have to swim when it's kind of cold, but it's, it's well worth the swim. It's so refreshing. They do have some restaurants surrounding the waterfall entrance area where you can get some grilled chicken and some sticky rice and some, uh, they have some other stir-fried dishes, but we're gonna try to, oh, since we have the van, we're gonna ask our driver if he can take us to a place. Uh, I, saw, I, I saw a couple cool looking restaurants along the way, or almost all the way back to town, but 
yeah, we're hungry now. It's time for lunch. all fell asleep in the car. That was about a 30 minute drive. We're almost back to the center of Luang Prabang, but we found a restaurant uh, that specializes in grilled goat here. And our driver said actually the grilled goat is more common, or usually only open in the evening, starting in the evening, so it's just lunchtime now. Uh, we got lucky that they're open, but that's why they're not busy yet. I'm sure in the evening, this, this would be packed with people hanging out and eating goat. They're grilling the goat up front there. It looks really nicely marinated. You can see chili seeds, you can see herbs on the goat. And then back here she's cooking the number of soups that we got. Uh, we also got some boiled, flash boiled goat with organs which she's chopping up. A couple of the dishes have just arrived and yeah, she grilled the, the goat and then there's some interesting sauces as well as one bowl of seasoning which is called makwen which is a, uh, it's related to Sichuan pepper. It's a great spice used in this region and yeah, we gotta try the goat first, the grilled goat and it's, she topped it with some fried chilies and some fried lime leaves. Oh yeah, it's a little bit chewy, but mmm, mmm, slightly gamey. It's very smoky. You can taste that marinade, the chilies, maybe lemongrass on there. That's flavorful meat. Oh, oh, the maquen is awesome. It's really citrusy tasting. So far, it, it gives you like a very, very slight zing to your tongue. It's like a citrus pepper. Oh, oh, that kind of went up my nose a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna get some of these herbs going on. Whoa. Whoa. That has like a... Oh, that has like a, a sweet and sour flavor to it. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of fish mint herb in China. The herb that tastes like fish. Yes, it does have a fishy taste to it. We also got a plate of luak. Um, this is goat that she just flash boiled, but she boiled it along with onions, there's chilies, there's some galangal in there. And this is a big mix of goat. You can see down below this pile, uh, there's some meat in there, there's some tripe. She cut up some kind of lung or liver and some other odd parts. And then I think you can dip it in a variety. Oh, this is served with the wasabi sauce. Mmm. Oh, that wasabi. Oh. Oh, that meat is tender too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's delicious. That's goat stomach. I'm gonna, for this one, I'm gonna dip into that peanut sauce. I'm not sure what the peanut sauce is actually meant for, but should be good on tripe. Wow. Okay. That's a very peanuty peanut sauce. <laughs> but that tripe, it's just like straight like elastic. I don't know if you, I don't even know if that's chewable. I think I took a bite before you and I'm still, I'm just, you're still chewing? <laughs> that's a little on the chewy side. But the meat was really tender. Mm -hmm. You gotta like chew with a rhythm. But I am tasting the a meaty goatiness coming out of that with every chew. I'm not making much progress though. Wow, that's, goat, yeah. that is definitely goat. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> the flavor is good though. Okay. Yeah. That's my combo there. The grilled goat with that marinade, with that dry rub, dipped into the makwen. That's a that's a combination. The final dish that we ordered is a goat bile soup. And even though it might 
sound a little strange. This is the dish that I'm most looking forward to trying because I'm a huge fan of the bitter cow bile soup, but I've never had goat bile soup. Uh, yeah, we're, well, let's find out how it is. Some random jiggly bits and also full of, full of chilies, full of lemongrass, full of kaffir lime leaves, and some vegetables. Wow, that's, that looks delicious. And that brown, murky, slightly green, grassy broth is, how, is what gives away the bile. Oh yeah, they just had to go to the market. In that broth, because they've used so much bile, you can actually see, or I don't know if it's coming from the bile, that might be the green bile, but there are actually like grass particles yeah. <laughs> floating around in the soup. Okay. Oh man, that's, yeah, this is, this does look like an extreme soup. Cheers, man. Cheers. Mmm. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh, that's mm. delicious. Oh. Okay. Yes, it is. It is not for the faint of heart. I mean, it is a little bit of an extreme yeah. soup, that's for sure. Mm. The bitterness, though, is is perfectly mellowed out. It's not like a really sharp. It is. It's almost like a. It's like a more mellow bitterness. The bitterness slightly grows on you. But as opposed to that, like impossible to chew tripe from the other dish. I got an intestine in that bite that was completely soft and tender. Um, you can taste the galangal in there, you can taste the herbs, and then it does it does have like a, a roaming pasture bitter quality to it. Oh, it's... That's, that's good. Yeah, that's stunner. I have no idea what that organ is. <laughs> oh, it looks a little like a goat mushroom. Oh, well, did you get a piece of that? I found the same okay. thing. Okay, you got the other half? <laughs> Mm. Oh, maybe liver. Whoa. Whoa, that has like a sweet, mm. a sweet taste to it. And kind of crumbly. Mmm. And you taste more and more goatiness with every chew. I need to follow that with some bile, bile liquid. Oh. What a, what a unique, what a, what a fascinating soup in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, with every single bite and sip of that soup, you taste the land. You literally taste the land. It kind of has a green, grassy, digestive, kind of digested kind of flavor to it. This is definitely a unique meal. And also, I just want to quickly show you, but they don't only have extreme food here. Ying and Micah got tom yum with chicken, and it looks really good. I'm just going to taste the broth. Mmm, mmm. Yeah, that is pretty good. A little bit sour, kind of tomato-y, and then it has a dry fl chili flavor to it. I think they might have added a whole chicken in there. Yeah, rumen, rumen has never been my favorite organ. Kind of like gummy in a strange, grassy kind of way. The, the flavors were great. I'm happy to have experienced the Lao style of a, of a full goat meal from the soup. Okay, the soup was actually one of the best dishes. That was fresh, that was delicious. The grilled meat was also good. Some of the dishes could have been a little fresher, uh, but that's probably our fault because we came in at an off-peak time. We should have really come to a goat restaurant in the evening, but we have other plans this evening, so that's why we wanted to come for lunch and it was on the way back to the city, so that's why we happened to be here, but I'm very happy to have had this meal. That soup. That soup was on the next level. That, that, is a, that is a memory that I will not forget, that's for sure. I will leave the information from this video in the description box below that you can check out. Remember to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and click the little bell icon and that way you get notified of the future videos that I post. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Luang Prabang. I will see you on the next video. And you gotta take one more fingerful of that makwen. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's like citrusy, slightly zingy, pepper, earthiness. Oh, I love it.